Tony D and Little Joan with a screenwriter's rant on A Baby at Any Cost. Starring Sarah Fisher. It's a thriller movie that gives the whole thing away in the trailer. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys. Books 1 through 8. And uh, I'm doing a live stream today. This is Saturday. Can't do it tomorrow. It's going to be a busy day. Um, so tune in at 2 p.m. I, I, I'm actually getting worse at using the technology on YouTube because I couldn't figure out how to schedule it. I, I have scheduled it before. I don't, I don't know what happened in my brain. I can't figure it out now. I couldn't find the thing to do to schedule the, the thing. So I figured I'd do another video and let you know. So 2 p.m. today, live stream. It's just going to pop up. Uh, it's going to be Hollywood Cot Take Live. All right. So, yeah. So this couple hires a surrogate. There she is. And this, this is the couple. And they uh, have a baby. Uh, they get her to carry the baby, and the uh, sister of the of the wife is jealous. She's very jealous. She's trying to be part of the family, and, uh, and which is totally good for the screenplay. By the way, it's a good move in the screenplay because what they do in the screenplay, and big spoilers ahead, because they give the whole thing away here. Uh, they set her up to be the foil. Like, she's the one that's jealous. So, she she's kind of uh, annoying. She, she, she desperately wants to please her sister. They have some drama. And um, there's an incident in the park where she uh, leaves her parking brake off and nearly hits the baby, upsets the mom, and the surrogate's there too. And... Um, you know, so, but then one day the mother, uh, one day, oh, the sister gets mad, throws a picture at the husband. He falls and hits his head in a scene that I don't, I don't know if this works. You tell me. So she, she throws the picture, hits him. And I, I don't know. I mean, it's a good cut. It almost works, but it doesn't really look like he hits his head to me. Um, Anyhow, uh, so the husband goes to the hospital because he's hit his head so badly. And then uh, uh, she the sister comes back and finds, finds the wife unconscious. So she calls the police and she's obviously blamed. But it turns out it's the surrogate who's doing all this. She wants the baby. And then she kidnaps the baby. She thinks she's going to marry the, the husband now. She's crazy. She's the crazy one, not the sister. Then the sisters team up to go find her. And then there's a big confrontation between the mother and the surrogate. And that's why it's called A Baby at Any Cost. So, let's see. Directed by Tar Tarmar Halprin. And do we got a screenplay? I mean, it's not a bad screenplay. Meredith uh, Stack. Not bad. Not bad you had a, a red herring that was viable. Good for you. But why would you give it away in the trailer? And you might say, well, why are you talking about it? It's in the trailer. That's what the trailer's for, to tempt me to see the movie. Now, I wouldn't see this movie anyway, because it's like a lifetime, women in danger kind of movie. I don't want to see these kind of movies. But Oklahoma Film and Music. So I guess it was made in Oklahoma. Uh... And in 2021, so it's one of the the pandemic movies, as I like to call it. I, you you should have not shown that part. It, it, there should and there, and to be honest, it's not enough to have one red herring. You probably should have another. Probably should have been at least one other viable character in the mix. Not you know at least for the trailer, just to throw out a name or you know oh I don't like that maid you know something. <laughs> something to you know give people watching the trailer and then to show the climax i mean you basically show the whole damn movie you don't have to watch the movie watch the trailer because you could get it all the way to the end when you see crazy kidnap the baby the sisters give chase the confrontation i mean it's it's the highlights of the entire movie 
uh, the three acts are here. First act, baby. Uh, surrogate has baby for a couple. They're very happy. The sister is a screw up. She's she's trying to get her life together or whatever. Can't live up to the sister. There's some drama there. They take the baby home. Okay. Uh, things get worse. The sister continues to screw up. They go to this park. The surrogate comes, and there's an incident, and the and the sister looks even worse. You can see, yeah, yeah, see, and she hates the surrogate who seems as nice as could be, and that's a good setup because watching the trailer, I believed, well, I had a low bar here, but I believed that the the the, the sister was probably oh, it's going to be the sister. Oh, it's not. It's the surrogate. Pleasantly surprised. A little bit of a surprise there. Um. So what you needed was to, I think, instead of going down the path of showing a whole damn movie, because then, you know, second act, her situation gets worse and worse and worse. Then the end of the second act, suddenly the mother's knocked unconscious. Oh, no, the climax would be she, uh, the sister, hits the husband with the picture, which we saw, hits the husband with the picture, puts him in the hospital. <laughs> even, even in this, Stella, it just looks bad. Puts him in the hospital. Here she is throwing the picture. And then, um, you know, leaving the mother vulnerable. And then the surrogate comes in to finish her off. Now, now part of the movie doesn't make sense. Like, how did the surrogate know, like, that would happen? Oh, only that would have given her the opportunity to go in there and then kidnap the baby and all that. But, you know, she's the crazy one. I mean, that's the name of the movie. A baby at any cost. You, you, it's unlikely it's going to be a guy. Although that would have been a twist too. That could have been a huge twist, right? For whatever reason, the husband can't, you know, he's sterile or whatever. So they get a donor and then it turns out, oh God, he, he really wanted a kid and he's crazy. And now you have a crazy kid, <laughs> crazy, crazy gene. Um, so first off, bad trailer. Bad, bad editor. Why would you give away the ending? I, I mean, if there's no other scenes in the movie, I, I kind of get it. Like, I mean, this is two minutes and 43 seconds. If you just cut off the ending, you know, just cut off, let's say, if you cut it off. Yeah, you cut it off right, maybe at, at a minute and a half, you know? Right around here. Cut off a minute. I think you would have been okay. I think it would have still been an effective trailer. You know? And again, I think you probably needed one more suspect in the mix. You know? At least mentioned in the trailer. Even if it was only a throwaway suspect, like the sperm donor, let's say. Oh, yeah, you know, turns out turns out they lied. Uh, turns out the sperm donor is... Uh, is a is an ex-convict and he's out of jail oh god oh god uh, we're gonna sue that place uh, i don't know <laughs> maybe they didn't want to go down that path i could understand that or maybe somebody's ex uh friend boyfriend whatever maybe the sister's ex boyfriend that would have worked because then you could tie it into the girlfriend a little bit and then you could say oh whoa maybe Maybe the girl, maybe the sister isn't in on this and it's her boyfriend who wants this. You know, ex-boyfriend, whatever, to get revenge on her. That, that's a viable candidate. You gotta have a few more viable candidates. And I know it's a budget thing, another, another actor, that's the last thing you need in these things. But look, you got a 90, let's say 90 minute movie. It's probably gonna be closer to 90 minutes than two hours. You're gonna keep it short. You know, what is most of this movie going to be? The three main characters sitting around, talking, you know. That's not much. So if you can't, in a, even in a low budget, if you can't throw in an action scene, you can't really throw in special effects here. Uh, there's, not, there's not much to throw in. What can you do? You can get another actor and just throw in another scene. You know, even if it's, even if it's a scene that takes place outside the house and feels 
relatively staged. You know, you could have the ex-boyfriend show up in front of the house. Hey, Cheryl, uh, I'm not done with you yet. You know, one of those scenes. Because at least we, you know. And then you could have, you already had the cops. So you could have the same cop earlier in the movie saying, yeah, we we did a check on him. He's been hanging around. He's he's living across town. Uh, we're just We're just warning you. You know, something stupid like that. I mean, not that cops actually do that, really, unless you have, like, a restraining order. But you could add that, too, right? You could say, oh, I have a restraining order against him. Well, he's not here. I mean, he is across the way. Next time, videotape. Like, you could you could put on one of those things. So at least you'd have a third viable candidate. So then when you're cutting this trailer together, it's like, who is it? Is it the sister? Is it the boyfriend of the sister? ex-boyfriend is it the surrogate you probably don't want to mention her specifically you want that to be a surprise i would throw in just like a you know the maid you know like an odd maid like an oddball you know oh i love your baby wait you don't bring the baby over there like just a quick scene like that just for the trailer i know you're saying don't write for the trailer. You shouldn't. But it's also for the movie, right? So when you have just a weird character like that, the audience goes, oh, wait a minute. Who's this maid? Because they're trying to figure it out. You know, you watch a movie like A Baby at Any Cost. You're kind of trying to figure out who's, who's the baby napper, right? You're trying to figure out who the baby napper is. <clears throat> So, and good casting. I like this actress. She's pretty good because uh, she had me fooled. She had me fooled as a total psycho and she's just kind of a drama queen <laughs> who's handling thing poor, things poorly. That's, that's an interesting character to me because she's not just a two-dimensional person who's just, you know, unrepentantly evil and is going to steal her sister's baby. Although you're setting her up like that. I believed it because it's a movie. And movies, yeah, again, low bar. Um, so, is this Sarah Fisher, by the way? I wonder. Um, yeah, so, it could have been could have been a better setup. I, again, uh, talk to the trailer people. You, you guys can't cut a trailer like this. You can't give away the whole damn movie. It's, a, it's the only surprise you got, and you gave it away. Why watch it? I literally have seen the whole movie. So even... Now, I'm not interested in this kind of movie. It's not my demo. But if I was, I'd be like, eh, I've already seen this movie. So, I look, I wish you well with it, but recut the trailer. Take this one down and recut it and, and take out the ending. And if there's any other character you can throw in this mix and even, even a line from the movie... Like, um, you know, the baby's gone, where's my baby? And then, like, some sinister music and just that character. Even if the dialogue, even if the movie doesn't show them as any kind of suspect, you can at least imply that, oh, there's many suspects here. And then that way, when you're watching it, you could be, the, the audience will be tricked. They'll be like, oh, yeah, it's got to be the sister. I mean, it's got to be the sister. Uh, we're two acts into this. It's got to be the sister. Well, I'm going to watch it all the way to the end. Oh, it's not the sister. So at least you have that. That's what I'm saying. Anyhow, that's it from me, Tony D and Little Joan. I'm going to post this. Make sure you tune in to the live stream today, Saturday at 2 p.m. Joan and I will see you in the next one.